Ladies and gentlemen, today we have um, one of Melbourne's own and Australia's own Morris Pags on the show. He's um, become a little bit of an underground superstar overseas and um, not many people might not know him in Australia, but uh, we've got him on the podcast here at Thinking Man Business Labs and it's a wonderful story that we can share um, to all Australians about what we can actually accomplish if we put our minds to it. So um, I'll, I'll give it over to him to give a little bit of an introduction to um, what he's accomplished and where he's come from. So welcome, Morris, and thank you for, for being on Thinking Man Business Labs. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Morris Paniello, uh, Australian-born, origin Italian. Uh, mm-hmm. At 18 years old, I left Australia to try and pursue a dream that I had from when I was young um, to Italy, actually, to Torino Football Club. And I spent uh, almost three years developing there from 18 to 21. Until yeah. I signed my first contract at 21, so and wow. played in Holland, ended up playing in Holland, uh, Metro Stars, New York, um, Italy, of course, and uh, had a stint in England as well. So yeah, it was been a it's been a um, colourful career, nice. difficult at the beginning, but um yeah, so it always is diffi- it always is difficult at the beginning, and I think um, in general, like for all of us, whether I'm doing a podcast or whether I'm I'm, I'm, I'm training people online, which is my daily business, which I, I, I teach people online and how to grow businesses online and all that sort of stuff. So people forget about how hard it is at the beginning, but three, four, five, six years later is when you get the results. People don't realise that, right? Yeah, it's, look, it's, it's, I think it's everything is what, how much time you put into it. Like uh, to become a professional player or anything professional, it's 10,000 hours, you know, the yeah, 10,000 yeah, hours. Yeah. And I, strongly, I, I, I strongly believe in that. I've got 50,000 hours. Yeah. <laughs> but I strongly believe in the, you know, the harder you work and the, the more you can believe in yourself because I, self-belief is at the beginning, everyone, no one believes what you're going to do. And uh, I think, you know, we're one of the pioneers of, when we came out like 22 years ago today, it was meant to be a two week trial and it's ended up being 22 years now. <laughs> two week trial to 22 years. That's, mm. a, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, where, are you, where are you at now? So it's, it's been 22 years. So give us a bit of a development of how that sort of happened over the last 22 years. So you spent the first three years with Torino and all that sort of stuff and then yeah, you know, I stopped America. Yeah, from, from 18 to 30. I was in Europe, America. I spent a year for six months, really. Um, but, yeah, I stopped at 30 years old. I went, my, my career had peaks and ups and downs, of course, and clubs folding and not paying. And I got to a point at 30 years old where I was in uh, League Two in, 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 in Italy. And I just decided to, you know, I wanted to go back home and build a pathway for, you know, the opportunities I didn't get from the beginning. And that's grassroots, which I, my, my, my main part of the business is grassroots. And has begun from there. I went back to Melbourne at mm-hmm. 30 from Italy, and I started in a in a park in Ivanhoe, Melbourne. Wow! Uh, at, at seven kids at fifty dollars a <laughs> training session. Wow. Today we're at 20, 22,000 affiliated kids around the world. So the, wow! I've done so a lot from of work 50, in, so from fifty dollars a training session to twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> That's awesome. No, no, no. To twenty thousand students, we've got twenty two thousand students. students. Yeah, students yeah. around the world yeah. affiliated. So yeah, no, it's, uh, students. It, yeah. In in a few months from the seven kids in just in Melbourne alone, we went to in a year we went to almost eight hundred kids in the academy. So wow. we had to build a football club as well. So yeah. Melbourne Phoenix. Yeah. So we yeah. that's it all starts. It all starts from it's all starts from back home. Yes, yeah, well, back to Australia and then back yeah. to Europe. Then in two thousand nine, I started that in two thousand six after the World Cup. So it was a big um, you know, Italy Australia, yeah, duo. Yeah. And also, there was, you know, that's when I think it really launched soccer, really launched itself in Australia. Yeah, uh, you say foot, everyone wants to say football, but I like to say soccer because I, I grew up <laughs> saying soccer, but <laughs> football, of course. Yeah, um, and uh, and I just think everything grew from there, and you know, and back and forth, you know, doing player management. I think I've placed in the last 12 years, I've I think I would have placed around 100 and almost to 100 Australian players at a certain level from semi-pro to pro level that have come wow. through the academy overseas. So yeah, it's an average of 10 players a year. But some years, you know, we end up doing 25 Australian players or, you know, yeah. it depends on the on the on how we are. So we're still, we're still, you know, I'm still pushing from my base is Australia, right? So any Australian player will have my, um, over any other country will get my, if I have to choose a player who's average, 
to a, a more average player than you know, somewhere else, I'll choose the Australian one, of course, especially yeah, for our course. clubs. So you've, ob- you've obviously still got the heart back home in Australia and, and the growth of Australian football. And there's obviously been a lot of talk and you, you might have seen or you might not have seen some of the stuff that's been on Optus Sport where Mark Viduka has been starting to talk about some of the stuff of the, obviously the golden generation of 2006 with, uh, and they've just, they've just re- reconnected with Lucas Neal and all that sort of stuff about talking about how they can, they can grow that, that grassroots stuff to, because it goes back to the, you know, the, the, um, the, the academy back in Canberra and all that sort of stuff, you know, back in the day. Um, so, you know, you would have been, you would have been through all that and, 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 and seen, seen seen all of that and for you to have placed over 100 players in semi and professional um standards uh is something to be really proud of what do you see the difference when you look at some of the australian programs and then when you see some of the european european programs that you're involved in um, because you've obviously been involved in both in australia and overseas so you can you you can come from a place of um of, of real relevance that can give us a real perspective of what the difference is. What, what do you think are the main differences between between the the, the, the academies and, and the way they train and, 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 and the way people are taught and the way people learn? Um, look, I think it goes... There's a lot of good coaches in Melbourne or uh, in Australia in general. There are coaches. They're, you know, they're all up to date. With, you, know, you can get everything online now. But yep. I, I think it's just um, a culture thing. I think there's a difference. It's always going to be a difference. Football or soccer in Australia is a sport. Yes. Whereas in Europe, it's life. Yeah. So you're, you know, you're born into 100,000 sta- theater stadiums and your passion and for your club. And I think, you know, what Australia lost out a lot was not trying to be political, but the A-League coming into it and having all these clubs taking away the origins of the ethnic groups or of culture of the sport that we did have mm-hmm. in the old NSL, I think that killed and we had started all over again. I think we'd be at a much higher level if, you know, we lived the culture. You know, we're a country full of immigrants yes. and that brought the passion over to Australia. And 100%. I think, um, and that's everything, the English, Italians, the Greeks, the Croatians, that's every, I'm talking everyone. No, um, so true. And I, I remember mean, being... That's been, but- I remember with the Macedonians, the Macedonians and, and the Greeks, like it was always, there was a passion, you know, but it was one of those things that it brought the best out in, in everybody. It was like the match that everybody wanted to see, you know? Of course. And, yeah. uh, you know, and there was rivalry between, not be, it, was, it, was a, it was a healthy rivalry between yeah. the Italians, the Greeks, the Masos. Yeah. I think um, we're losing that and starting from scratch again put us behind another 20 years. So, and I think still the mentality in Australia is, oh, Okay, we train every day, one hour a day or three times a week. It's not enough. Like, if we want to be able to compete, we're already far behind. Like, step one, like we can come to Spain or Italy, and you see the training methods are different. Like, but it's just the players have an objective, and that's to get to their first team, no matter what level they are. Mm-hmm. Whereas in an MPL club that doesn't even have a senior team, there's no ambition. And I think if you're not going to have a, a promotion relegate, you don't have a promotion relegation. The football will never grow, especially yeah. in a country yeah. like ours. Maybe it has success in the MLS, mm-hmm. but in Australia, you don't have the population no. to, to do that. And then, you know, there's no, you, you finish first all year and you've, you know, you spent the most, you've played the best and you still haven't won the league. You still got to do a playoff system. So it's, it's really, we've tried to copy a system that, that doesn't work for us. So if uh, Australia will never grow personally. Yeah. Uh, at a higher, at an at a at a league level, a competitive level, because you don't look. There are teams that finish last and say, "Oh, wooden spoon," but you know, where's the hold on? If we lose, we lose our jobs, or yeah. you know, so they're not really killing themselves to play. Yeah. So that's the mentality, a different mentality of someone here. It, it's their job and they live for it. Where it's in Australia, it's still a sport. And if I don't make it and I lose my contract in a league, I'll go and do plumbing, or I'll go and do some another other job because there is. Yeah. So you, you have, having having too many options, I think, is is not is not a, an advantage either. It's really interesting that you say that because I I watched uh, Mark Viduka, Schwarzer, um, Aloisi, um, Craig Moore, um, and there was a couple other guys there from the 2006, and they were talking about 
the training and how they went through it and how they were all in Europe at the same time and how they excelled because they were in Europe at the same time. And what you're doing is you're reminiscing pretty much exactly the same what, they're, what, they, were, what they were saying about, about the training and how important it was and the drills they were put through and the amount of hours they had to do and the amount of work that they had to do. And when they went back to the hotel room, they kicked the ball against the wall for three hours before they went to bed and all that, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah. it's actually resonating with exactly what you're saying. So um, there's obviously no disagreement between the elitists here. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Uh, I just think, yeah, you're right. There's, um, there's also one thing. There's, a, there's um, the advantage of being overseas far away from the family. It means you're living for the sport. Yeah. Where in Australia, you can't live for the sport because you do great two-hour training with any coach in the world in your country. But the moment you walk off that field, your head's not in football anymore. Your head's at schoolwork, uh, your grandma's house, and your friend's birthday, and the family mm. dinner, and the, the relatives coming over. So you're not living, this, you're not living breathing football. Sure. So why do people get results when they come here and say, oh, Europe's, you know, he improved in Europe. It's because he's living for it. He's yeah. living. He's, he's, yeah. he's going to the gym. He's got no other distractions but to become a footballer because that's yeah, his dream. Sure. And the sacrifice, sure. and it's a sacrifice. I think the yeah. first objective for a player to become professional is his family and social life. You can't mm -hmm. have a social life, a proper social life, like any other normal kid, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to become a, the best, the most elite athlete in the world. Because yeah. I always say, there's one saying I say, you want to become a professional player, you've got to become a professional a person first. And that's yeah. live for something. So, yeah, it's all about that. Yeah. And, and how do you do that in your academy? So how many academies do you have now? Like how does it – how do you, how do you – we have residence academies in Italy and Spain. They're the residential academies. Um, yeah. We've got an academy affiliates. So I send coaches to, example, Sacramento, Dallas, uh, Miami, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, in Italy, Spain, uh, in China, we set up an affiliated academy. So I send our coaches and we do our programs. The best ones that we see that have most potential come through to our residential programs. Right. From, from there, we give them evaluation and we see if they're fit to go into a professional or semi-professional club. So you make that decision. It's not a financial decision. You make that decision. I make that decision. We right. own our own clubs. We're invested in clubs. We sponsor La Liga clubs. So to give us the positions for my players to be able to, to go there. If you take, let's be realistic, it's very, very difficult, very hard for a player for an Australian player to come in and take a European an eight, under 19 level, under 16 level to come in and take a, a Spanish or Italian player, you know, that's been there all his life in the club. Mm -hmm. What's the club going to, you know, where's the advantage for the club? Cause they don't say we've got a lot of raw talent in Australia, but mm -hmm. here there's no time for raw talent here. They need the talent yeah, and you have right. the talent because of the numbers, right? It's a numbers game yeah. and you have the talent and they're local and they don't cost anything to the club. So I got to go to the clubs and say hey he's not going to cost you anything you're getting exposure from an international player and it could become a player for you so you know i have to wheel and deal my players to get into clubs it's not that easy and i those 100 kids i've had to wheel and deal them all in unless the kids have had a little bit something more where they've signed contracts at 14 the families have because you can't sign until you know you're eight, 16 if you're not european yes and a perfect example reno piscopo he came over at 12 years old Oh, wow. uh, and I was at Wellington Phoenix. He went to Inter Milan, we, but he came to the academy first. Yeah. Then the family and the family had to make a big decision and, and you know, it paid off for him because he signed five-year contracts for Inter Milan. Sure. And now his choice was to come back to Australia and we don't know if he comes to gonna stay there or come back overseas. But he has had a career. He's a professional player and he's now in the under-23s Olympic team. Yeah. And he played for Australia. He played for Italy. So they're, they're mm. rare cases that, you know, that, you know, guided the right way by the right management. And pushed through the system, but if we didn't have to, we didn't push him. He wouldn't be there. Like many yeah. other players, the list could go on, you know. Yeah. But um, we've yeah. had to do that. Anthony Carter, who's at uh, Benfica. Yeah. We, yeah you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, we we took him to Italy. He didn't have paperwork. We had to get him to Parma. They couldn't sign him. We went to Romania, CFR Cluj. He debuted in first division there, the Champions wow. League team. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Now, then, then went to now he's in Portugal. Signed a three two year deal in Benfica. So, we're talking. These are just at random players that have managed that we, uh, you know, that have come through our system. And there's a lot more. I'm not going to yeah. go in detail, but they're the ones yeah, from Melbourne that people would know. So, so yeah. So there's a lot of um yeah a lot of players that out of the hundred maybe. 
50 or 40 aren't in Europe anymore, 60 aren't in Europe anymore, but there's 40 that had a career and yeah. that are still going. And then 20, mm. you, it keeps cutting down because yeah. you can do one year. The hardest thing in football is to, to sign and even harder to stay up there. So, yeah. And so what do you, do you keep, do you keep up with the Australian system at all? Do you, do you keep an eye on it and check it out? I do. do. You time? I do. I do. I don't have much time for the A-League because I yeah. don't, but in yeah. youth development, we, you know, I've got scouts in every, in every city, in, in Adelaide, in Melbourne, in Sydney, in Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, we actually brought over Newcastle Jets for a tour here. We actually okay. sponsored a tour for Newcastle Jets to right. come over to Spain and have, okay. you know, friendly games. Yeah, this is two years, two summers ago. Um, so I've got relationships with people in clubs and um, but more grassroots academies and stuff and see how the players are and, and you know, I liaise with them and we, we bring over players to our academy and we try and give them as much support as we can. Yeah. Uh, provide, so it's not, I mean, so it's everyone, not, you, it's not yeah. you against, it's not everyone against each other. It's about working, working. Oh, it's about it. I, yeah. don't see, I don't see anyone in Australia as competition. If they see yeah. us as competition, it's because they've got their own objectives, their own ambitions and competition's yeah. healthy. Yeah. So, but I, but I think no. If I can help uh, help someone else, it's not a monetary thing. If we can help out someone or give them an opportunity. Look, Australia, this morning, yeah. I was, yeah. This, this morning, I was given example. A Spanish agent calls me and says, "Oh, there's an Australian player, uh, 25 years old. He's looking for a team. He's 190 tall, 80 kilos, and he's a very good player." And I didn't say, "Oh no, he didn't come through my system. I can't help him, and I'm not going to yeah. help him because I'll give someone else publicity." I don't. No, the no. more I, the more the merrier for me. So yeah, I know awesome. how hard it was being overseas by myself and any players that are here. If they need anything, I'd always be open to helping trials or whatever. Especially if they're ready, right? Hey. Especially if they're ready. Of course. Yeah, and that's um, awesome. that's really awesome. So you've been you've been over you've been over there since how how old now? How long have, how long have the academy has been going overseas now? Well, I started the res the first residential academy in two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. So this would be uh, eleven, 11 yeah, two thousand nine, eleven it's years. Still going well. Yeah, we're we're going very strong. We've moved, you know, we we moved into sport management. A lot of sport okay. management. We have offices in in Manchester, in London, Milano, yeah, sure. Madrid. Yes. Uh, so Mexico City. Um, so we've started wow. our office bases very strong with strong some strong partners. Yes. Um, so we've just, um, yeah, we've, we've, we've moved really quick and uh, it's growing. So, but still, I haven't lost focus on the development side of things, but I've actually uh, invested in a few, in few clubs, of my oh. own clubs, to oh, buy my own players. Yeah, yeah. Really? So what are, they, yeah. what are, what are, those, what are some of those clubs? Uh, a team called Guadalajara, which is yeah. we're fighting to go to, to League One. Yeah. We're playing, doing a playoff in July. Yeah, uh, we've just had another team that's just gone into League Two from Spain, in Tercera yeah. Division. That's my okay. own club as well. Um, we've invested in a club in First Division in Malta, Hamrim Spartans. Okay, so Fantastic. there. Plus, we run the uh, one of the directors of Leganes Football Academy. Uh, yeah. Leganes is a La Liga club. Yes, one of the board members. I, I was with this club since I was in Third Division. Right, and worked with them all the way up. So okay. business partners with the owner of the club. Sure. Uh, we're fighting to survive this season. We, yeah. you know, we need three points to get out of relegation zone. So yeah. that'll be awesome for us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's five or six clubs, Cartagena as well as Segun League One, going up to Championship in Spain. So we've got five or six clubs that all my players. We, you know, we try and keep them amongst the, and we've opened up our new our new pro semi pro club in in Sacramento called mm -hmm. Racing Sacramento FC Racing. Okay. Russing is the group we have as well, the club group that goes buying clubs and changing their names to to Russing, which is our, okay. our club. Yeah, so we have we just closed one if Miami Beach Soccer Club as well. So okay. that'll be a Russing, yeah, Russing Miami Beach Soccer Club. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, so we, we, it's a project where we're enthusiastic about because you know we work within our own pool of players. Apart from the yeah. academy, we, we're working with our club players, so we own their player rights as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, how do you like? Obviously, as a businessman, you've got that many different things. You've got player, you've got player management. You're involved in you're, you're involved in clubs. You're involved in the purchases of clubs or investment in clubs at some sort of level. Um, you're involved in the development of players. How, how do you? How do you, You've got a family, obviously. You, how, how do you juggle all of that? Like seriously, and then still have time to talk to someone like me? You know. <laughs> Well, I make time for things I like and, yeah. and people that I see that are developing other people to become better. That's I, I make time for that. 
I yeah. don't have much of a social life. My social life is going to have lunch with a director or an agent or an ex-player yeah. or yeah, yeah, so sure. No, no, no social life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> football, friend, fo- football life. Yeah, and um, but you know, sometimes you just have to make um, make a decision to choose what you want to do. And maybe, yeah, maybe I do have my my hand in too many plates. Yeah, but sometimes you just got to focus on what you that was to make you focus on what you got to know everything, right? So I'm sure if your own business, you're yeah. developing people. You you know you've had to get to where you are now. You've had to do many different types of. Uh, jobs and and go through experiences so oh, it's, it's the same for me it's the same for me people always say to me they go Pete, how many hours do you have in in a day i go as many as i need to i'll, I'll find i'll find i'll find a way you know what i mean and unfortunately sometimes that's at, at the sacrifices you know, your own family or, or or your own time with your own family yeah. and, and that's un, that's unfortunate but sometimes you're just that focused that you've just got to get what you got to get done right of course and when you do get that then you'll be another objective and so you just got to make sure you make time for family because that's everything and i think these last two months have been fantastic for that yeah and just bring have us been. down to earth and saying wow what if it all end tomorrow what would we do yeah so that's it's given true. me it's been for me it's been a blessing i mean it's been very sad for all the deaths especially in spain and italy and around the world in america yeah. but um, for me it's been a blessing to be able to be home and not have to worry about you know, and just worry about making time and, and making yeah. time with my kids, right? So it's been awesome for me. It's been. And how, how, how has the last, been, uh, last two months been for you? Is, 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 is this the most time you've spent with your family nonstop without traveling? Yeah, this is the most time I've ever had with my family. In, in, like yeah, for, yeah, in, in, for, in, in forever? In forever. Far out. Isn't that crazy? Yes, yes. It takes something yeah. like that. That's crazy. Eh? It's yeah, crazy. I know. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, so, yeah. I, will, I will make time for family holidays. I will make time. No, now, you know, knowing I will make time for these things because I need them as well. So we're not yeah. machines, right? No, we're not. We're not machines. No, we're not machines. And, and this is what I want to get across to people that there's, there is a mix um, and we've got to make sure we, we handle that mix appro- appropriately but at the end of the day, your passions are still going to be your passions and they're always going to, they're always going to take over somewhat, aren't they? Well, that's the secret, right? If you yeah. can find a passion and, yeah. work and get paid for it, it's not yeah. work, is it? It's not, no, it's not, it's not work at all. It's not work at all, especially, <laughs> when, you're help, especially when you're helping people. Like for me, I help people um, find their dreams, whether it's becoming online and, and doing what they do as an online resource. For you, it's them becoming professional footballers. And there's nothing more, I guess... Um, you know, fulfilling for me when I see one of my students become successful. It's exactly the same for you. When you see one of your players become successful, it, it, monetary side aside, it must be really gratifying. Yeah, it is. You know, but sometimes I don't realize how much I've done or what I've done because I. It's just, you know, we did the Pele tour. We brought uh, Maradona around to Dubai, a close one. So, so sometimes you just don't realize what what you do and how it, because you're in the middle of it. Like this mm-hmm. year we gave the award to, to Leo Messi. I gave him his golden boot award and wow. the hell Australian, Australian doing that. And, wow. I, and it was unexpected. It was unexpected. How did, how and, did that happen? How did that all happen? It's a long story, but I didn't realize what we're going to do. Um, we've helped out uh, a lot of uh, foundations. We've done, we, we do a lot of, um, I'm vice president also of autism soccer in Miami. So right. It's a foundation where we help kids all around the world, autistic play, kids to mm-hmm. come and do our football programs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just to motivate them. And, you, and just, you know, people don't know about the there's levels of autism. They're autistic. You know, yeah, Messi had uh, some uh, signs of autism when he was younger as well. Wow. And he's managed to, to cope with it and live with it. And, you know, and um, this year or last year, um, I got called up as our company. Uh, we sponsored also part of the event, Geneva International, the academy. And uh, and uh, the director goes, oh, can, you know, when he's, he's got the golden boot, he's going to award the boot. He goes, oh, can Morris Paniello and Ruben Corona of Geneva International come up to the stage? I thought, this, you know, I was sitting like behind Messi, you know, yeah. sitting behind him. Was like, and I've known him before. I know his father well. He's an agent as well. So we've had some business stuff together and um i walk on stage and they give me the boot and i go what do i do and he goes give it to messi <laughs> i go what <laughs> so i go uh, i'm just in shock right so yeah. we're up there on stage and all the photographers there and all the vip people that were there and the invitation invited guests from fifa from uefa 
all there. I'm thinking, this, what's happening? So I just turn around, give him the boot, and I said a joke between us. Um, this is the first time I'm saying it. I said it should have been Ronaldo to Messi. <laughs> is that what you said? You like, what? Is that what you yeah, said to Messi? I, I, you didn't yeah, say that yeah, to yeah, Messi, did you? I, I swear, swear to God, it should be Ronaldo. He looked at me like, what? But we've had confidence because we, we you know we, we had lunch before so we yeah. knew who we were like yeah we just laughed about it right yeah but uh they're, they're funny things that you know i can say but you know, i'm shocked we're holding and all the photographers and, and i'm thinking you know wow so it's just like gratifying because i've had some negative press about me because when you're growing it doesn't matter what if you're you know in this football world it's a jungle so yeah. I had negative press, and this was just like just cleaned everything. Like, hold on, you don't get to hand a boot to Messi if you if you're anything dodgy yeah. or you know yeah. they don't make you do that. So um, no, it was it was a, it was a, it was an uh, I didn't realize until after people were saying until my you know when I realized my Instagram went up for a hundred thousand people because Messi publicized our photo, right? Uh, and it went a hundred thousand people within a night. Then I receive a message from Instagram, from WhatsApp, Instagram, and I click on it, saying, "Yes, it's me." Like, and I lost my Instagram page. It was hacked. Oh, Someone stole. They're selling shirts online. I can't. <laughs> True story. <I'm> curious. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I have to start. All, I have to start. And all these people offended. Oh, you're not following me on Instagram anymore. I have to explain to everybody. It was stolen after the messy event. Yeah, far like, out. I know. It wasn't stolen. I gave it away. I gave it away. That's it. Just for the record. <laughs> just for the record. That's crazy. So yeah. when you did that, when you did that with Messi, and you said you've had some some battles, obviously with bad press and stuff like that. As a businessman, because like we're a business page, right? So, and and I'm a businessman. You're a businessman. At the end of the day. Like we we help players, we we try to help people as much as we possibly can. But at the end of the day, we need to make ends meet, right? At the end of the day, that's that's the baseline. We need to make ends meet. How do you how do you stop that affecting you as a business person? Like some of that negative stuff. How do you block it out? What's the best thing that you've done? I just think um, the result. People can write what they want. People can write about what they want and they can say and have an opinion on you. But at the end of the day, if you you know you're doing good and you you got your, your intentions are true to yourself more than anyone and you're doing good for people more than what you're doing bad or what people would say, Yeah. Um, I think that's the key. Like mentally to be stronger than anything and the more you get knocked down, just keep getting back up and working. And I think the hard work pays off and not hard, the right work, right? If you've the got right true work, intentions yeah. and you're doing the thing, the people, like when, for example, a uh, story came out, I'll, I'll go quickly into this, all right? So yeah. we get it over. No, it's all good. Um, I, I was involved in a match-fixing scandal in Italy in 2014. In 2014, what I'd done, uh, I was, I put my present today, the club's called Monza Football Club. It's owned by Berlusconi. Right. Right, Berlusconi is the old, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Prime yeah. Minister of Italy, owner of Milan. Today it's owned by him. I saw his vision, what he had. I saw it before him and we got the club before him. The problem was the the owner uh, disappeared and we got stuck with the club on our hands for a few months. And what happened, uh, we got approached by well, investors. Somebody. Yeah. Investors. And, uh, well, the thing's over. Never went to court. Never. It was just speculation, right? There was an investigation. I had to go and say, yes, this is what happened. They offered us money to, to buy one of our games. Uh, we didn't know what was going on. We just, yeah, yeah, we, we branded it off and mm -hmm. uh, we just pumped them off. But in Italy, there's a rule. If you, someone offers you something like that, you have to go and report it or something. Report them, report yeah. them to the police. But we didn't know these people. Those yeah. the people that just came into our office through the director. And we just brushed it off. A year after the scandal comes out, my name was there saying, oh, I have to be investigated. I'm investigated because of the situation. So I went to report exactly what happened and it finished there. But the newspapers and when we do have success, buying clubs or selling a player or whatever, newspapers, mm -hmm. oh, but in 2014, he was accused of knowing of a match-fixing scandal. So it sort of comes up. So, but yeah. you know what? It doesn't, doesn't touch me anymore. It affected me back then, but I've just yeah. grown with it. And, and you know what? If they write about you, it's something you, you must be important. If they don't write about you, there's something, it means you're not doing something right as well. So, but at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's as simple as if you know deep down you did the right thing, nothing really matters. You know what I mean? Of course, of course. And if it doesn't come up and you've, you know, you're clean, like you're clean. And you know yeah. what? The president of, of Barcelona, the president of, of Real Madrid, 
I wouldn't be having lunches and dinners with these people if mm. anything was true, but anything was true, but all what they were writing, you know? So sure. the people that I work with and the players and everything, that doesn't affect me. You know, it can affect the competition because I will try and use that against us, but we're, you know, we're the strongest at the moment and we're, yeah. we're getting results. So good on you. It doesn't, yeah. Uh, that's, that's awesome to hear someone bounce back from something like that because that could end people, really. It could end some people. <laughs> You know, people have taken their lives. People have been, you know, gone into depression, never heard of again. And, you know, yeah. I don't, yeah. So, yeah, knowing the truth, you don't, it doesn't affect you, right? Yeah. It affects right. you, you know. Some investors might want to see and you have to just say, hey, look, it's clean everywhere. You know, this is just, you know, but, you know, that's life and you have to deal with it. And agents don't have a bit of a clean name anyway. So, and I've become an agent. I, agents are always the you know i had an agent a famous agent and something didn't go right at a club or they didn't get me and i would always try and blame the agent oh the yeah. agent must have asked too much money or the agent this the agent that and you know i'd always blame somebody else for not being good enough to be at that level or sure. it's the situation the coach didn't want me at that position he had a favorite player in that position so you know you don't have to blame someone and you know i remember myself as a player blaming my yeah. agents whereas yeah. really it's just the situation it was yeah that's so. right yeah no no that's 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 really great to hear and it's 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 really great to hear an australian doing really well overseas and 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 flourishing and like i said we've got We've got mutual friends like Pat and all that sort of stuff that we know well, in Australia. Yeah, Pat, I want to thank Pat Matisse because he was my mentor. I, have, I you know, lived in Australia I, 22 years ago. I had four of his books yeah, with right. me and that will keep him motivated. All his quotes would just keep me motivated. And, really? Uh, I would write that. Yeah, yeah, I swear to God. I think I still got those books somewhere in yeah. some house. Yeah. But uh, it's fantastic, you know, yeah. and uh, he's my, he is my mentor. So he's oh, one of the mentors who helped me. Him and Craig Johnson were my my two inspirations over here keeping me positive right that's, so. am that's, that's, that's amazing that's amazing to hear so um before we go like i said we'll keep it we'll keep it trying quick is there anything else you want to um pass on to 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 maybe um you know ffa australia or something something that can help um some of the guys if they hear this or or anything like that that you would that we that you learn from overseas i just think football is a business, so you need business mm -hmm. people to run the administration side of things. But you need football people to run the football departments. Yeah. So there's no point, no offence to anyone, a person from rugby coming into football and trying to do football things where there's a whole different, it's just a whole different ball game, right? Mm -hmm. Even the balls are even different colour uh, sizes. But the problem is you need football people. And I think those players that have been overseas, like the Viduka, Zero Neals, the Cahills, all inspiration, you know, all inspirations yeah, to us. Sure. Uh, and, and me as a player because, you know, I was in the lower leagues watching mm. these Australians do it. So they've been there, they've done it. So if we want to get to that level to be able to compete, you need these people working for you. Yes. And you need yeah. someone who's been overseas. So I'll, I'm all for a uh, board of directors of the new A-League being all ex Australian players that have played overseas. Yeah. Or example, Archie Thompson, who's a yeah. fantastic ambassador who came to play for my football club. Yeah. Here as well, yeah, in sure. Spain. Right, he came over and he was a great inspiration for kids. Saying, "Hey, you know what? At forty years old, I, I, I had my dream to play in Spain professionally, and I did it." Yeah, you know? and he, yeah. he was two game stint. But you know, there's just little things like that that I think you need you need football ambassadors and football yes. people to run football to run the football side of things. Sure, fantastic. That's and all. Right. I think that's a great. I think I think that's a great message. And if you were, if you were asked to come back and 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 do some some type of role with with the FFA, be it virtually or not virtually, would you would you accept? Would you enter, entertain that in in some type of consultant capacity? I think my 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 I would like to come back and live in Australia one day. The yeah. business has grown so much that it's impossible for me to come back and live. Yeah, right. But if I if I do get the business to a stage where I can come and my kids can grow up in Australia or finish growing up in Australia, that's yeah. my dream. That's my objective. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm all for it for for development in Australia. I know we have a lot of potential kids, structure, facilities. I the think the amount of people you know, playing, the, the amount of kids playing. Exactly. Yeah. I just think there's just something missing, and that's between the business side of things and the football people. And there's football plenty people of people that know their football. There's plenty of money. There's plenty of money going around. There's plenty of money well, going. Around. You know what? There are countries like Uruguay that there's no money. 
but yeah. they're still are producing one of the uh, four million population. So the population of Melbourne is in Uruguay, and they're producing more players professionally. Why? Because it's not the money. Sometimes it's it's the the hunger, the the desire for it. And you know why do people say oh. It's uh, why do poor kids or, you know, less fortunate kids end up making it more than someone else? Because they have less options. Yeah. They have I less options. We're here. That's, we're that's we're a, branded. You've got to study and get a job where it's no study, do what you have to do, but keep football your first focus. And that's what we don't have. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a very poignant point because you're exactly, you're exactly right. How can someone like Uruguay who doesn't have the millions and millions of dollars that the FFA does produce better players than what we do? Well, the, 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 the best ones come to Europe and they develop and they yeah. have no choice but not to make it. So that's the mentality yeah. kids should have in their head is soccer or die, you know? Yeah, soccer or die. <laughs> I've, soccer I've, or got, die. I've got, I've got, I've got <laughs> an ambassador called Fernando Morientes. Right. He's one of our, our, lead, our Geneva International Academy ambassadors and I travel right. with him around the world. And all he did was said, Morris, I studied, I did everything, but all I wanted to do, all my energy was in football. That's all I wanted to do, play for Real right. Madrid. Yeah. And I went to trials, I went to the ID camps, I did it, and I never got picked. I yeah. had to go to a third division team, then to go to a second division team, to go back to Real Madrid. It took me 10 yeah. years, but I got there, yeah? yeah Played sure. for Liverpool, he's done, he had a big career. But he's just an example of, a, of an average kid who became better every day. Yeah. He wanted it. Yeah. So, no, it's good. So, tell us, tell us some of the other stuff. You said you're doing some stuff with El Clasico and Legends and all that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, that? that's, that's a side business, but we do, we, we organise pro football tours, not yeah. only for clubs, for clubs from Emirates to come here. We've got a base in Dubai as well. Our office yeah. is, head office is in Dubai for our sport management and events. Sure. And uh, we, bring in our, we bring in our teams from Saudi Arabia, from Dubai, from Emirates to, to Spain to do their pre-seasons. Um, we've got a contract with our Classic Low Legends that we're doing yeah. in Mexico. We had to push it back. We had to push it back to yeah. fin- f- end of October. It was meant to be in September. Yeah. Um, so that's that's great because what we do, we don't just do a Legends game. And No, we get the Legends to come and do our coaching clinics for kids, oh, for wow. less fortunate kids for that's free. That's so amazing. that's in, in our budget. We put that for, you know, an inspiration. Yeah. I mean, you need inspiration. Kids need inspiration. And I think um, there there's a lot of ambassadors we have in Australia that are inspiration yes. for kids, you know. And cool. all they have to do is talk to a kid for five minutes and that's it, you know. And yeah. I think one of the best ambassadors for Australia personally is Tim Cahill. And yeah. people start following him and his daily life and everything. He's, he's, a, he's a perfect example of yeah. what an Australian player has done. And now the way I think he's doing coaching and stuff, he's a, he's a great, like he was, you know, one of my favourite players growing I mean, up I mean, he's also well. my, one of my favourite players, but he's also an inspiration considering he's not, if you look at him, he's not built to be an ex a, a player that has... That excels. He doesn't have the height. He doesn't have the the if the figure or whatever it is. But he's he's still excelled, right? Which is an amazing an amazing inspiration for most players, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Especially in a in a country like England, where they look for those kind of players. He'd, he he right. would have been more for Spain, right? Yeah, right. But, uh, but physically, but he look he had his his career and look at how it went. I think if he's does coaching, his coaching career will be just the same. It's all about yeah. his willpower, hungerness. The drive, the determination, twenty percent is talent, mate. Eighty yeah, yeah. percent is the rest of it. The discipline, yeah. the you know, yeah, everything right. else. Yeah. So no, that's awesome. That's awesome, mate. Look, I really appreciate your time today. I know you've been busy doing uh, babysitting and doing all your sort of stuff, and, and <laughs> <laughs> but I'll catch up with you on WhatsApp, and I'm sure we'll stay in touch, and um, we might catch up again sometime soon. But I really appreciate no your time. And um, pleasure. If you ever need anything, you know, you know where to get me, and it's the same way. Okay. I'm sure we have a new person in Australia we can count on for football yeah, anyway. Yeah, 100%, mate, 100%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. All right, mate. I'll talk. Take it easy. See you, mate. See you, Bye-bye. buddy. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.